Hey guys, so a lot of different price movement. Hopefully you had fun at your pre-release and if you did get one of these eight cards, you were able to trade it away for basically anything. Remember it is supply and demand. Demand is at its highest and supply is at its lowest. So the prices of these cards have actually been going up. So the most expensive card in the set or the most expensive mythic is Khan, Scion of Urza. This is no surprise. He is very cheap. He is an artifact. Reminds me a lot of Karn Liberated. It just sees play because any deck that wants it can use it. And it's overall a very powerful effect. Now, where do I see the future of this card not great uh, mainly because it's hard for any card to be over thirty dollars uh, no matter how much play it sees it needs to be amazing in other formats like eternal it's already good in ed8s but that comes a, a little later but it has to be good in modern or kind of legacy legacy is not played as much anymore but i would say it has to be good in modern and then this card can hold its price but even Liliana of the Last Hope, which was seeing play modern in the Death Shadow deck, which was the number one deck at the time, it barely held its price. All right, Mox Amber. A lot of people are down on this card. They don't really see the utility of it. Any Mox is going to be good. And I'll just put it that way. It has it comes in a little bit slower than most moxes. I mean, the whole point of a mox is it comes in fast and you can accelerate. But for EDHs, when you have something like this, it will be an EDH staple. The foil price, as you can see, is $130. I don't expect that to hold at all. I don't expect... So Khan, if things go correctly for him, he should be able to stabilize. This card is not going to. I see it plummeting in price, especially the foils. There's just very little supply right now, and people are hyped, and they want to buy the card now, 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 now. So delayed gratification. If you can wait a little bit of time, this card should be much cheaper. It is also a legendary artifact, so unlike the other moxes, you can't play them in multiples. It's good, though. All right, so this one, History of Belinia. I did talk about this in a previous video, and I said it was a very good card to pick up at the price point, which I think was $5 at the time, into 17 It's very good. You can go back and watch the old video. Nothing, has, nothing in my analysis has changed in this card. I think it's just a lot of power. Uh, you get two, two, two creatures with Vigilance, and then you get the pump, and that's assuming you don't have other knights so if you had other knights it would pump those knights as well and white aggro has always been a staple of magic the gathering i'm glad to see it return and it's pretty much this is the definition of white aggro it's throw down some creatures pump them and then smack in for damage i think this card will have some standard play it will be a beast in standard i just don't see it long term it wouldn't be a card that you would really want an ed8 but maybe modern would take it i would not buy a 17 right now i would buy five which obviously is too late to buy five but i would not buy a 17 very limited the double white is also quite limiting on the card so next one we'll talk about Tefe. he is at a Low 13, he has dropped and never never recovered. I did pull one of these at my pre-release. It was very good, but you know the it forces you into two colors and you cost five. These are generally things that are not good in modern. So I'm gonna focus primarily on should it is it playable in modern. JST Mind Sculptor is now legal and he's at four. So for one extra and one extra color, is this card that much better than Jace? And the answer is absolutely not. Uh, given the choice, even if you made this four, you would always play the Jace over, right? Like it's the plus one is nice. I grant you that it is kind of nice, but it is the definition of a standard card, which seems good now, but history will tell you it doesn't have a chance in modern. 
as a five mana two color planeswalker man it, you're not looking at too many of them uh being playable especially in blue uh, when with jsd mind sculpt our band now let me talk about jace jsd mind sculpt i think is a good time to buy him just as a small side maybe i'll make a longer video but the analytics tells me it's a good time so next we have lyra dongbringer very this is like a blame bane slayer angel that is depending on how many other angels you have that may be actually better than Bl bane slayer angel and now we know bane slayer angel is very good it does have the protection from demons and dragons this is not but this has a pump ability i think it's fantastic um it definitely is going to see play in edh you can see the foil multiplier is over four and mythic angels always for the most part hold value i know a chroma has been hit a chroma has been reprinted into oblivion recently so she has not held her value plus she has not aged well in terms of how strong i mean back in my day you get the chroma out you win the game and even if it cost eight that was the game ender but now, like, it's not even that impressive compared to some creatures we have at 8. Lyra is just the increasing of power. It's the definition of power creep. Because before, we just had Sarah Angel, which was a 4-4 four, four flying lifelink. And that was considered very good. Now we throw a bunch of abilities on her. Okay, and we have Modroa, the Grave Tide. This is a very spicy commander. Uh, I do see its foil holding a premium, but is it a eight time premium? It's eight or nine times, so you know that's EDH. So whenever you see a very big difference in between the foil and non-foil, when it, something comes out, that's not because of Modern, that's because of EDH. Uh, modern hasn't yet accepted any of these cards. Now, what percentage of these cards that I'm showing you right now of the eight mythics will be accepted in modern? I don't think any of them have a chance. Uh, I personally think Khan is 50-50. But when you go down to Mox Amber, it's kind of slow. We go down to this one, it's just an EDH card. Uh, the majority of cards will never see modern play, like real modern play. Khan might, but he... But the question is, is he better than JC Mind Sculptor in a blue deck? Is he better than Bloodbraid Elf in a Jun deck? I don't know. I, I, I don't assume he is because he seems very niche. Um, good, great card, very power, powered. But when you go to something like modern, you have to compare it to so many different sets. And that's why it's difficult. All right, so two cards left. We have J.R. Ballard. And this is triple red. This is an interesting spec because she's going to fall very low soon. Once these other cards like Khan and even that EDH beast that we just saw, they will hold price. This one will not. And she could be 250 and might be interesting buy. The triple red is very limiting and the fact that she costs 5 makes her not mod and playable. With very few exceptions, like Karn Liberated. But Karn Liberated literally is game-changing, right? He resets the game. That's one of his abilities. Plus, people playing Karn Liberated are not hoping to get him on turn 7, 8, or 9. They're hoping to accelerate him, ideally, by, let's see, 7. Yeah, so they can get the Tron Lands active. They can get him on turn 3, which is a lot different, right? This card is not going to see any play in the modern formats. It might see some play in EDHs, but it's just not very good. However, here's the big however. Like you always, when you buy something, it's not necessarily how good the card is. It's how, f it's the price difference, right? If I think this card is actually worth $10, then when it falls to $2, I'm willing to buy it, even if it's not Jason Mind Sculptor at 100 I think the buy-in will be interesting on the card. It's definitely one to watch. And lastly, number eight, Phyrexian Scriptures. I like these uh, sagas. I do feel like there are ways to abuse them that are not yet known. Because uh, maybe they're not printed yet. Like resetting them would be kind of fun. 
So the mythic sagas, if you really believe that sagas are going to be broken in the future, they're not broken right now. But all it takes is some future card to combo with them and and that's all it really takes. In this case, you're not like really that encouraged to point. So it's interesting because you do want counters, but then you don't want too many counters. So if there's a way to hold the counters with or there's a way to remove the counters and then add a counter that would and then trigger the ability again that would be kind of interesting anyway these are the top eight most expensive mythics in the set hopefully you guys pulled them and traded them away immediately i think con has a good chance to hold price but the rest of them unless there's a deck out there for them in standard they're not going to really find homes in modern anyway bye guys